The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, the Amplified Version, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions, and authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any way harm you. Our Lord Jesus himself is speaking, and he's not holding back. He's boldly declaring that he has given you, yes, you, authority and power over the enemy. Now, he's not referring to literal snakes and scorpions. Instead, these represent the forces of darkness and spiritual wickedness that try to create chaos in our lives. Jesus is making it clear that you have the God-given authority to trample on these forces. But it doesn't stop there. He goes on to say that nothing shall harm you. This isn't a promise of a trouble-free life, but rather an assurance that when you're walking in your God-given authority, the enemy's attacks cannot ultimately prevail against you. So, what does it mean to have spiritual authority? Spiritual authority, from a biblical perspective, is the God-given right and power to act on his behalf in this world. It's not about dominating others or showing off our spiritual strength. Instead, it's about standing firm in the victory that Christ has already won for us. Jesus himself confirmed this authority when he said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And here's the amazing part. He has shared that very authority with us, his followers. Today, we're going to break down this powerful truth and see what it means for your everyday life. We'll start by looking at why the enemy doesn't want you to know about your authority. Then, we'll look at the different areas where you have authority as a believer. I'll also tell you about five important tools you can use in spiritual battles. We'll talk about how you can actually use your authority in Christ in real life. Lastly, we'll look at how to beat the doubt and fear that might stop you from fully using your authority. When we're done, you'll know exactly what authority you have in Christ and how to use it. Now, before we begin this life-changing teaching, let's take a moment to set the atmosphere and invite the presence of God into our midst. Remember, the enemy would love nothing more than to distract or discourage you because you are about to be delivered into the fullness of your God-given authority. So let's pray together and ask the Lord to open our hearts and minds to receive all he has for us today. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with open hearts, ready to receive your word. We acknowledge that all power and authority come from you. As we explore what it means to walk in the authority you've given us, we ask that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts. Holy Spirit, we invite you to be our teacher, Illuminate the scriptures for us. Help us to not just hear, but to understand. Give us the courage to apply what we learn, to step out in faith, and to see your power manifest in our lives. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We receive it by faith. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. If you believe, type thank you Jesus in the comments. Let's talk about our enemy. Who is he? The Bible makes it clear. It's Satan and his forces. The devil is the sworn enemy of God, humanity, and everything God stands for. Every move he makes is calculated to oppose God's plans. Think about it this way. When the devil strikes someone with sickness, his main goal isn't just to cause pain. No, he's aiming to make God look bad. Have you ever heard people say, if God is so loving, why does he allow suffering? That's exactly what the devil wants. He's trying to twist our perception of God's character. Jesus said it best in John 10.10. 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The devil's mission is destruction, while God's is abundance. Now the devil has two greatest weapons deception and ignorance. Let's break these down. Deception is all about lies. The enemy tries to convince believers that they lack authority or are powerless. He whispers things like, you're too weak, God doesn't care about you, 
or you're not good enough to use spiritual authority. These are all lies designed to keep you from stepping into your God-given power. Then there's ignorance. This is simply not knowing the truth about your authority in Christ. If you don't know you have authority, how can you use it? It's like having a million dollars in your bank account, but never knowing it's there. You'd live like you're broke even though you're rich. The consequences of not understanding or using your authority are serious. You will live in fear and feel defeated by the enemy's attacks. You will struggle with the same problems over and over, not realizing you have the power to overcome them. Most importantly, you will miss out on the victories and blessings that God has for you. But here's the good news. Now that you know about these strategies, you can fight against them. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, 9, Through knowledge and superior discernment shall the righteous be delivered. This shows us how powerful knowledge is. When we know the enemy's tricks, we can beat them. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's from 1 John 4 verse 4. You have the power to stand up to the enemy's plans and win. You know your authority in Christ. You have the Holy Spirit to guide you. With these, you can overcome anything the enemy tries to do. Now let's talk about the authority believers have. As a believer, you are not harmless or weak. Many of us have been lied to by the enemy of our souls, the devil. We've been deceived into thinking we're weak, that sin will rule us, that demons have power over us. But that's not what the Bible says. Let's look at three key areas where we have authority. First, we have authority over sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 tells us, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. This means sin doesn't rule you anymore. You have the power to say no to temptation. You're not a slave to sin. You're free in Christ. Second, we have authority over demons. Remember Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This isn't just fancy language, it's a real promise. You have the power to resist demonic influences and even to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Third, we have authority in prayer. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Your prayers aren't just words floating into the air. They're powerful weapons in spiritual warfare. When you pray, things happen in the spiritual realm. Fourth, we have authority over fear. Two, Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This means that as believers, we don't have to be controlled by fear. When fear comes knocking, we have the authority to shut the door on it. We can stand firm in the power, love, and self-control that God gives us. Fear doesn't get to call the shots in our lives. Fifth, we have authority over illness. James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. This shows us that we have the authority to pray for healing. Our prayers offered in faith can bring restoration to those who are unwell. Remember Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 tells us, By his stripes we are healed. We can stand on this promise and exercise our authority in praying for healing. So, as believers, we're not just equipped in a few areas. We have comprehensive authority over sin, over demons, in prayer, over fear, and over illness. This authority covers every aspect of our lives. It's not about being superhuman. It's about relying on the supernatural power of God working through us. When we fully grasp and exercise this authority, we can live the victorious life God intends for us.
So stand firm in your authority, use it wisely, and watch how God moves in and through your life. Now let's look at Jesus as our ultimate example. Throughout his earthly ministry, there was never a time when Jesus encountered a sickness or disease that wasn't healed. Every person who came to him in faith received their healing. The apostles, following in his footsteps, exercised the same dominion in their lifetimes. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 18, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and he's passed that authority on to us, his followers. As believers, we have five powerful weapons to use in our battle against the devil. Number one, the name of Jesus. This name holds ultimate authority. Philippians 2, 9, 10 tells us that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. When we use his name in faith, we're invoking all the power and authority of Christ himself. It's not just a phrase we tack onto our prayers, it's a declaration of who's in charge. Number two, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus guarantees our victory over sin, death, and Satan. Revelation 12 verse 11 says we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb. When we apply the blood of Jesus to our lives, we're claiming His finished work on the cross and all the benefits it brings, forgiveness, healing, and deliverance. Number three, the Word of God. This is our offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6 verse 17 calls it this for a reason. God's Word has the power to cut through lies and deceptions. When we speak Scripture, we're not just quoting an ancient text, we're releasing God's power into our situations. Remember how Jesus used Scripture to defeat Satan's temptations in Matthew 4? Number four, prayer and worship. Prayer invites God's intervention in our circumstances. It's our direct line of communication with our commander in chief. Ephesians chapter six, verse 18 urges us to pray in the spirit on all occasions. And worship? It's a powerful weapon that shifts atmospheres. Remember in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22, how praise brought victory in battle. Number five, faith. Ephesians 6.16 calls faith our shield. It protects us from the enemy's fiery darts of doubt and fear. Faith isn't just believing. It's acting on what we believe. It's standing firm on God's promises even when circumstances say otherwise. These weapons aren't just for show. They're for daily use in our lives. When fear comes, we can declare the name of Jesus and stand behind our shield of faith. When facing sickness, we can apply the blood of Jesus and pray in faith. When confronted with lies, we can wield the sword of the Spirit and speak God's truth. In every situation, we can engage in prayer and worship, inviting God's presence and power. Remember, these weapons are part of your spiritual arsenal. They're not reserved for special occasions or super spiritual people. They're for every believer, every day. So pick them up, use them wisely, and walk in the authority Christ has given you. You're equipped for victory. Now that we understand the power available to us through Christ our Lord, the question remains, how can we exercise this authority in any situation to enforce the will of God? Before we look into that, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, be sure to do so. Let's move on. As a believer in Christ Jesus, you possess an incredible power, the authority to triumph over the enemy and the forces of hell. This is not a power to be taken lightly, but one to be embraced and exercised with confidence and faith. First, understand that your authority comes from your identity in Christ. You are not a victim, but a victor. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above every principality and power. This is your rightful position, and it's time to start living from this place of victory. Second, know that your words carry power. When you declare the promises of God over your life, you are releasing His transformative power into your circumstances. Speak life, speak truth, and watch as the darkness trembles and flees. Third, approach prayer with boldness. 
you are not begging God to act, but partnering with Him to see His will done. When you pray in the name of Jesus, all of heaven stands ready to back you up. So, command sickness to leave, declare peace over chaos, and speak life into dead situations. Fourth, engage in worship. When you worship, you are declaring God's supremacy over every challenge you face. As you focus on His greatness, your problems will shrink in comparison. Your worship is a weapon, and it has the power to break every chain. Finally, stand firm. When you've done all you can do, stand. Stand on God's Word. Stand on His promises. Stand in the authority He has given you. Don't waver, don't back down, and don't give up. Remember, you are not alone in this battle. You have been given the power of the Holy Spirit, and He is ready to work through you mightily. So, rise up, believer. Take your place. Exercise your God-given authority. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Let that truth sink deep into your spirit today and watch as everything changes. Your best days are ahead of you, and greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Go forth in power, go forth in victory, for this is your heritage in Christ Jesus. It's normal to have fears and doubts when it comes to exercising your spiritual authority. You might wonder, am I really qualified for this? What if I fail? What if nothing happens? But here's the thing. These fears don't come from God. In fact, God has promised to be with you every step of the way. In Isaiah 41, 10, he says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is your God speaking directly to you. He is with you. He will strengthen you and he will uphold you. Remember, you are not alone in this battle. You have been given the power of the Holy Spirit, and He is ready to work through you mightily. So rise up, believer. Take your place. Exercise your God-given authority. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Let that truth sink deep into your spirit today, and watch as everything changes. Your best days are ahead of you, and greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Go forth in power. Go forth in victory, for this is your heritage in Christ Jesus. Don't let doubt or fear hold you back any longer. Embrace the authority that is rightfully yours. Speak to the mountains in your life and watch them move. Heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. This is your calling, and you are equipped for it. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. That's you. You carry the solution to the world's problems inside of you. So let your light shine. Step out in faith. Use your authority. And watch as God does exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. This is your moment. This is your time. You were born for such a time as this. Seize it. Embrace it. Walk in it. The best is yet to come. As we come to the end of this video, let's recap what we've learned. As a believer in Christ, you have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. This authority is not something you earn, but something you inherit through your relationship with Christ. To exercise this authority, you have five powerful weapons at your disposal. Knowing your identity in Christ, declaring the Word of God, praying with authority, engaging in worship, and standing firm. When you use these weapons consistently, you will see your life and circumstances begin to change. But knowledge alone isn't enough. It's time to put this into practice. Start each day by declaring who you are in Christ. Speak God's Word over your challenges. Pray with boldness, knowing that God hears you and is ready to act on your behalf. Worship, even when you don't feel like it, knowing that it is a powerful weapon against the enemy. And when you've done all you can do, stand firm, trusting in the victory that Christ has already won for you. 
As you begin to exercise your authority, we'd love to hear about your experiences. Share your testimonies, your challenges, and your questions in the comments below. Let's encourage and support one another as we learn to walk in the fullness of our authority in Christ. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has encouraged and empowered you to start walking in your God-given authority. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. The Holy Spirit is with you, ready to guide and empower you every step of the way. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel. We're committed to producing content that helps you grow in your faith and live out the victorious life God has called you to. By subscribing, you'll ensure that you never miss a video. Thank you again for joining us today. Keep walking in your authority, keep standing on God's word, and keep shining your light in this world. God bless you.